We have a concrete car calling in the back, if we can get him. Cracking away. There you go again. We have a concrete car in there. The Conkerick, he's a, he's a finicky little lad. He has a exacting habitat requirements. He needs vegetation that's a 20 centimeter high. We put a lot of hard work into the place. There's a lot of hours going to these metal beds here. They're just not here by fluke. It takes a lot of finesse and um, effort and um, technical skill, um, which I got from the national parks to create these metal beds. It's like that if you get two combs and, and rub them across each other. Earlier on in the year, down by the iris field there, a crake, he was craking inside the wall and then he flew up and he, he peeked back at me, so I was kind of delighted with that as well. The first conquerors come back in mid-April and then start coming in around this area at the start of May. So I suppose it would be like a, a hurler waiting for the all hurl to find. <laughs> you'd be all anxious, like, you know. But then, um, I'd be, you know, you'd be thinking, are they going to come or are they not going to come? And then, you know, in my partner, Aoife, I'd be wrecking her head and iron her the whole time, talking about conquerors the whole time. And it wouldn't really stop then until the conquerors come. Then she's happy then because I showed up then, like, you know. You know, they're an intrinsic part of the culture of rural Ireland, especially around the western seaboard. Like, so, so like if, if you lost the concrete, you'd be, it's not just losing a, a species nearly, it's a part of the culture as well. Like, the concrete is mostly confined to the Gaeltic dairies. Like, you know, this is a Gaeltic dairy, and I'm um, in Norway, Donegal, so it's, it's a real bird of the Gaeltic. Like, you know, so you could even say, like, where the Irish language persists, you have concrete, like, you know, so they kind of go together. like. <laughs>